Hello, I'm Brandon Lee, and welcome to part two of my filmmaker's vlog in Morocco. In this vlog series, I'm gonna take you through the making of my short film, Morocco Arise. If you haven't seen the short film, check the description of this video. There is gonna be a link, you definitely wanna watch it. And also check for a link to my film school, Unscripted Studio. Okay, let's begin part two. The next stop on our Morocco journey was the Atlas Mountains. The drive to the Atlas can be a bit dangerous with violent tempered weather along the twisting roads. We stopped to film a morning market in the Urika Valley. As soon as the sun came up, they started selling vegetables and fresh cut meat. And every sale involved haggling and negotiating. Then we enlisted some local village kids to run along the bridge for one of my shots. The kids could not get enough of seeing themselves on camera. Then we went into the home of a local Berber family who were personal friends of my friend Marco. They taught me how to properly pour Moroccan tea. There were several kids around from the family and the village, and they started playing a game of marbles. The kids were so wrapped up in that game, I ended up filming them for over an hour. But they had to take a break because it was dinner time, and mom was making a special dish, couscous. To film everybody eating, I used my 360 camera to get an overhead angle because I wanted to show the togetherness of everybody gathered around the food. Family is really important to Berber life, and I feel like they spend quality time together in a way that a lot of families don't anymore. After that, we journeyed further into the mountains, and we stopped at another village to film the women who weave the traditional Moroccan rugs. Starting with the spinning of the wool, and then weaving by hand. I got so wrapped up in shooting this scene that I had a few mishaps. But never mind, I got right back up to get this overhead shot of all the rugs being laid out for display. So thank you to everybody from the village for letting us film this scene. Different cities in Morocco have different colors of Medina depending on the materials that they're using to make the walls. In Rabat, the Medina is all white. My friend Aisha, who is from Rabat, volunteered to wear a traditional dress and walk down the street so I could film her. I wanted to show the colors of Morocco and also the beautiful quality of light that filters in through the lattice of the Medina when the sun is directly overhead. I filmed these scenes with my tilt lens to create a dreamlike atmosphere. And at dusk, I filmed a ferryman outside the walls of the old city. This man rose people from one side of the shore to the other, and I loved the mood that was created by the wooden boat, the dusky light, and the storm clouds in the sky. Next, I linked up with my friend Hitchim, and we took a train to the northern city of Fez. In Fez, it's essential to have a tour guide if you don't want to get lost. The Fez Medina is an impossibly intricate web of alleys. Some of them are so tight that you have to turn sideways to get through, and others are dead ends. Our journey through the Medina brought us to the Chihuahua Leather Tannery, which is over a thousand years old, and some people say is the oldest leather tannery in the world. In these honeycomb-like vats, the cowhides are soaked, treated, and dyed with natural colors. This process involves the use of animal urine, so while this may look beautiful, be warned that the smell is pungent. My favorite filming subjects in the tannery were the workers who scraped the hides to soften them and remove the excess hair. 
This man told us he's over 70 years old and he still has incredible energy. In the final step, the leather is hung to dry in the heat of the Moroccan sun. We also went to the Riyadh Salam Fez, which is a spectacular traditional home that's been converted into a luxury hotel. They gave me permission to wander the grounds and film whatever I wanted. One of the main things that caught my eye was the automatic opening ceiling, which lets light into the cavernous interior. They let me film the ceiling opening and closing over and over again. I was trying to capture the feeling of ascending to another world. Cheers guys Cheers. to Casablanca. Yeah, <laughs> Hichim and I went up to Casablanca where we met up with my friend Tarek, who's a professional tour guide. Tarek had volunteered to take us around the city. We explored the Medina, and I filmed some of the daily life at the market. This part of the Medina is away from the touristy areas, so it was mostly local people selling to other locals. I wanted to be able to candidly follow one of the vendors, so I put a GoPro on his cart, and this is what I got. As we were wandering, I spotted this abandoned building, and I was fascinated by all the different layers and textures of it. To me, it was kind of a symbol of all the different cultural influences of Casablanca. The city is in a constant state of maintenance and rebuilding. The wooden beams that you're seeing here are used to prop up the walls so that the buildings don't fall on top of each other. Next, we stopped for a delicious lunch of tagine on the street. And then we visited the Hassan II Mosque, which is one of the largest in the world. It was low tide and the sea formed a patterned mirror reflecting the mosque. So I went out there with my gimbal, I got low, and I walked toward the mosque to get this shot. Thanks for watching part two of my vlog series. There's one more chapter coming, so click like, subscribe, and the notification bell, and I will see you in the final chapter.